Back in 1971, four cesium atomic clocks were synchronized and flown on commercial planes that circled the Earth twice, and then compared to the reference clock at the U.S. Naval Observatory. Sure enough, the moving clocks differed from the reference clock by exactly the amount predicted by relativity. Let's look at it a little differently. Here is a graph of a car traveling due east at its maximum speed of 100 miles per hour. It is making no progress in the northward direction. All of its speed is going east. Now let's turn a little to the northeast. Even though the car is still doing 100 miles per hour, it is going less than 100 miles per hour in the east direction because some of the speed is being used to go north as well. Space and time can be thought of in the same way. Everything in the universe is traveling through space and time at the speed of light, the maximum speed available. Picture time replacing east and space replacing north in the car example. If you are sitting still in space, not going north, you are traveling at the maximum speed through time, east. But if you start moving in space, north, your progress through time will slow down since some of your speed has been diverted. The faster you go through space, the slower your progress through time. If you could travel at the speed of light in the space direction, you would make no progress in the time direction at all. Time would stand still, as it does for a beam of light. And if you could go faster than the speed of light, you could travel backwards in time. Remember, if different observers must always agree on the speed of light, then they must disagree on the components of speed, time and distance. Time and distance both shorten from moving observers. These unusual effects of relativity, time dilation, and length contraction depend dramatically on your velocity. At everyday speeds, they are simply not noticeable. The fastest that humans have ever traveled is a few miles per second, a tiny, tiny fraction of the speed of which light travels, 186,000 miles per second. But in Einstein's universe, space and time are no longer absolute. There is no single time that exists for everyone in the universe. No distance in space that everyone can agree on. Space and time, like classical velocities, are only relative. Einstein preferred to think of a single entity, space-time, in which events and measurements took place. One observer might see two events as separated by a large distance, but occurring at almost the same point in time, while another observer views the same two events as occurring nearby in space, but far apart in time. While the individual space and time separations will be different, Einstein's equations allow the two observers to agree on the combined distance through space-time. It wasn't just our idea about space and time that were altered by Einstein's theory of relativity. Einstein also realized that we should have to reconsider the whole idea of energy. This fact is summed up in Einstein's most famous equation. Perhaps the most famous equation in all of science. E equals mc squared. Besides defining the energy of a body at rest, the equal sign also indicates that matter can be converted into energy, and vice versa. The conversion factor, the speed of light squared, is an enormous number. According to Einstein's equation, a tiny bit of mass can be converted into an enormous amount of energy.
But there is more to E equals MC squared than atomic bombs. The recognition that mass can be converted into energy made it possible to understand the source of energy of the sun and the stars. Still a mystery in Einstein's day. It also paved the way for the exploration of the mysterious realm within the atom and the discovery of a whole menagerie of new particles created from pure energy and powerful particle accelerators. In the early 21st century, nuclear power plants provide about 20% of our nation's electricity, converting a tiny fraction of mass of each uranium atom into usable energy. Perhaps even more than his idea about space and time, Einstein's mass energy equation has had a far-reaching impact on our world and our way of life. Relativity is about two people agreeing about what they see when one of them is moving. When that motion is at a constant speed in a straight line, we say the observers are in an inertial reference frame. Yes, Einstein's relativity for inertial reference frames is called his special theory of relativity. And in it, he postulates that any person moving at a constant velocity will observe the same laws of physics that a stationary person observes. I take it from your little performance that you're going to tell us about frames of reference that are speeding up or slowing down or changing directions. Absolutely. Do you think that Einstein's principles still hold? Can we say the laws of physics are the same for observers in accelerated frames? Does light travel at a constant velocity in non-inertial frames of reference? Jeeves, start it up, please. Let's put you in a closed room in deep space. Millions of miles from gravitational influence of any planet. You can float about the room effortlessly. Objects at rest remain at rest. Objects in motion float along a straight line until they collide with a wall. But if rocket engines attached to the room began to accelerate you through space, you would feel something quite different. You would feel yourself pushed by the accelerating floor. Objects at rest would seem to fall as the floor accelerated up to meet them. If the acceleration were large enough, you would be able to stand and walk about just as you would if you were back on Earth, subject to the attraction of gravity. In fact, Einstein argued, there's no way to tell the difference between being stationary under the influence of gravity or being accelerated through space. And since all observers must agree on the basic laws of physics, the laws of physics that describe gravity must be in some sense, equivalent to those that describe acceleration through space.